Hello everyone and welcome to Biology Insights. This is the second video lecture of an interesting series that we have started about inheritance biology. And in this video lecture, we will discuss the application of Mendelian principles. If you are new to us on Mendelian principles, first have a look at the previous part of the series describing the principles in detail. So, get your diving suits ready and let's have the second deeper dive in inheritance biology. We all know that Mendel's principles of inheritance were proposed in 1865. Though it was a great breakthrough work, it was ignored for many years because other basics of genetics like chromosomes and DNA were unknown at that time. Nearly after 40 years, in 1900, his work was rediscovered almost simultaneously and independently by Karl Korans, Hugo de Vries and von Schemark who were also working on plant breeding. It could be said that 19th was the time when Mendel's work was actually appreciated and recognized as an applicable one for genetics. Mendelian principles have several applications, but for instance, we are going to focus on mainly two of them. Number one is prediction of the genotype and phenotype of the next generation when parental generation is known. And number two is to know the exact genotype of the strain when its parental generation is unknown. Several methods are there that apply the Mendelian principles for easing the genetics experiment. One of the methods was given by Reginald Crundall Punnett, a British geneticist whose book named Mendelism is known to be the first famous science book that introduced genetics to public. Punnett is greatly remembered in history as a creator of Punnett Square, a tool which is still used by biologists to predict the probability of possible genotypes of offspring. Apart from Punnett square, there are two more methods, Falkland method and probability method. But focusing on this video lecture, we will talk about Punnett square and Falkland method in detail. For situations involving one or two genes, it is possible to write down all the gametes and combine them systematically to generate the array of zygotic genotypes. Once this has been obtained, the principle of dominance can be used to determine the associated phenotype. This procedure is called the Punnett square method, which is a straightforward way of predicting the outcome of the crosses. For example, let's take two true breeding varieties, tall and dwarf, that are homozygous for different alleles of a gene controlling plant height. As we have discussed in previous video, the allele for dwarfness being recessive is symbolized as a lower case letter D and the allele for tallness being dominant is symbolized by corresponding upper case letter D. So in the parental strain or the P generation, tall plants are symbolized as DD and the dwarf one as TD. The hybrid progeny is referred as F1 generation where F represents female generation, a Latin word meaning son or daughter. Because each parent contributes equally to its offspring, the genotype of F1 plant is heterozygous for the allele. But their phenotype that is the characteristic of the plant is same as the parental strain because the allele for tallness is dominant over dwarfness. During meiosis, this F1 plant produces two kinds of gametes in equal proportion. Neither allele is changed by having coexisted with the other one in the heterozygous genotype. Rather, they separate or segregate from each other during the gamete formation. This process of allele segregation is perhaps the most important discovery that Mendel made. Upon self-fertilization, the two kinds of gametes produced by F1 can unite in all possible ways. This self-fertilization is called intercross. They produced four kinds of zygotes, 
However, because of dominance, three of these genotypes have the same phenotype that is the tall characteristic. Thus, in the next generation called F2, the plants are either tall or dwarf in ratio of 3 is to 1. Well, here we have predicted the outcome of the generation when the parental genotype as well as phenotype is exactly known. But what if you have a strain of plant which has known phenotype but unknown genotype and you are not familiar with its parental strain genotype as well? The second application of the Mendelian principle gives appreciable answer for it, where we perform test cross. Here in this example, there are two possible genotypes of the available strain. It could be true breeding homozygous or heterozygous with one dominant and one recessive allele. So we will cross them with phenotypically recessive homozygous strain, that is dwarf plant. If it gives 100% tall plant, the tested strain is proven to be homozygous. And if it gives 50% tall and 50% dwarf plant, that is 1 is to 1 phenotypic ratio, the strain is heterozygous. In brief, we can say that test cross is where the individuals are crossed with phenotypically recessive individuals to determine the zygosity of the tested plant. The same method of Punnett square can also be applied for dihybrid cross, where it gives 16 possible genotypes, from which we get 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio, as we have seen in previous video lecture. But what if there is trihybrid cross taking 3 genes? Well, over there, the Punnett square will give 64 possible genotypes. But how many phenotypes? Isn't it pretty difficult to tell? Let's go further. What about tetrahybrid? 4 genes, 5 genes, 6 genes and so on. Whoa, too tedious and confusing, isn't it? So does it mean we can't go for the prediction beyond 2 or 3 genes? Think about it. Share this video to your friends and ask this to them too. Because question is the first key of that door which takes you to insights of biology. The answer of the question is Falkline method, another method for application of Mendelian principles. Here we can predict the outcome of crosses involving two or more genes way easier than Punnett square. To understand it better, let us consider an intercross between peas that are heterozygous for three independently assorting genes, one controlling plant height, one controlling seed color and one controlling seed texture. So there is trihybrid cross and instead of computing the progeny in square by combining the gametes like in Punnett, we display them in a diagram of branching lines. This trihybrid cross can be partitioned into three monohybrid crosses because all the genes are sought independently. For each gene, we expect the phenotypes to appear in 3 is to 1 ratio. Thus, for plant height, it's 3 tall, 1 dwarf. Seed color is 3 yellow, 1 green, and for seed texture is 3 round, 1 wrinkle. Using fork line method, we can combine these separate ratios into an overall phenotypic ratio of the offspring by multiplying them. As a result, we get 8 different phenotypes. So, that is 3 into 3 into 3, 27 tall, yellow round seed plant, 3 into 3 into 1, 9 tall yellow wrinkle seed plants, and so forth. Falkline is also applicable for test cross, where same multiplication rule is followed, giving the ratio of 1 is to 1 as Punnett square. Yeah, Falkline is definitely the easier one than Punnett. But don't you think if we have greater number of genes, it would be time consuming? Well, upgradation is always the thing that is chased and in fields like biology, where research itself is time consuming, quicker result analysis method is always appreciable. On that basis, probability method, which is the third method for application of Mendelian principle was introduced. 
we will learn its interesting details in the upcoming video lecture before we summarize the video if you like it don't forget to give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified whenever the new insights of biology is introduced in this video lecture we learn about two methods for the applications of mendelian principles punnett square where we can predict the outcome of crosses writing down the gametes and combining them systematically in a square but the limitation was if more than two genes were considered in hybridization it was very long and tedious procedure to be performed that limitation was overcome by the second application that is fock line method where we combine the separate ratio by multiplying them to get total number of plants of a particular phenotype these are the references we gone through to make this video lecture thank you for watching stay tuned to biology insights for more interesting video lectures and if you want us to make video on particular topic let us know in the comment section see you in the next video